I'd like to call to order the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, April 3rd, 2017. Uh, first order of business. Business is a reorganizational me meeting, so I will turn it over to the Chairman Pro Temp, Mrs. Kropelka. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have brought that over to you. I apologize. first order of business is tonight is to have an organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and a vice chair. So now I'm going to ask for a nomination from the board for chair. Mr. Grilly. I'd like to nominate Mr. Joseph Curro for chair of the board of selectmen. Second. Second by Mr. Byrne. I'd like to move to close nominations. Second. All in favor? Okay. Mm. Mr. Curro. Aye. 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 Aye, Mr. Okay, so here in an unanimous vote, we'll go on to. No, that was to no, close, was not to close, close no, nominations. Oh, oh, now we sorry. take the vote on the oh. chair. Are you new here, madam? I <laughs> am. I am. I just said to talk. This Only is going to be good. Okay. Those. All right. So now we're taking the vote for the chair. Okay, Mr. Kiro. I abstain. Aye. Aye. Mr. Mahan. Mr. Aye. Byrne. Mr. Aye. Really? Okay. So it's a four to a zero one. Okay. All right, so now we can move on to vice chair. And do I hear any nomination? I'd like to nominate Mr. Stephen Byrne. Second. I'd like to move to close the nominations. Second. Okay, uh, Mr. Kiro. Aye. 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 Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. That's to close Aye. nominations. To now close to vote. nomination. Now we're going to vote on the new <laughs> vice chair. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Stephen Byrne. <laughs> Um, so we're ready to take a vote. Mr. Kiro. Aye. 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 Mrs. Mahan. Aye. Mr. Grilly. I know it's hard. Aye. <laughs> you have to call Mr. Byrne to say. Okay. Mr. Okay. Byrne, would you accept, accept the nomination? Thank you. Okay. So um, all in favor, we do have now Mrs. Mahan as a is stepping down. We have Mr. Kiro as the new chair and Mr. Byrne as the vice chair. So I'm going to turn over the gavel. To Here's your Benny Hill music. Exactly. I've never been on this side. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, thanks. Excellent radio. <laughs> so the, I'm glad summer's coming. Then. Hey, you. <clears throat> glad to be back. Plate. Your name plate up. Oh, geez, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Everyone set? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you very much to my um, to my colleagues for the uh, vote of confidence in me and in uh, Mr. Byrne. We'll certainly work to uh, to earn earn that through the next year. And I do also want to welcome Mr. Dunn and Ms. Mahan back to back to the board. We'll look forward to working with you over these uh, coming years. <clears throat> Um, those of you who know me from similar roles elsewhere know that I often um, like to open our meetings, open meetings with uh, an inspirational either quote or um, lesson from history or, or from literature that either relates to leadership or Arlington or the business before us. <clears throat> and with the um, bittersweet moment that we have this evening um, it was a little difficult and I had to really think about it. <clears throat> what I reached back to is um, actually uh, ancient Rome and uh, it was the error of um, the Emperor Diocletian in the fourth century. Diocletian was um, undertaking a um, persecution of the early Christians at the time and he became very upset uh, that one of his district military commanders was refusing to take part in these uh, persecutions with him. So he sent an envoy and they, um, <clears throat> they found that this was true and they, they, they sentenced the military commander to uh, um, be burned at the stake. When the commander was, at, was on the pyre and the soldiers came 
delighted, the commander said, if you do this, I'll climb the flames to heaven. They relented, they backed off. Ultimately, the commander was um, martyred, but he's come down to us um, and has been known as uh, Saint Florian, who is the patron saint of firefighters. Because he, um, <clears throat> he had a reputation of organizing his uh, military units into uh, fire brigades. And if you look at our firefighters' uniforms and equipment today, you'll see that they all carry all over the world the Florian Cross. So tonight we're remembering another great um, Arlingtonian who also um, stood up against persecution and to give voice to, to those who, who could not um, find it and who uh, devoted his entire life really to helping others first as a, as a lifetime career firefighter and, and then for the last eight years as our state senator. Um, and of course, I'm talking about Ken Donnelly, and we all heard the news last night of his, um, his passing, and I know it's shaken. Um, it's shaken a lot of us. I first met Ken almost 30 years ago when I was working for the Senate Chair of the Joint Committee on Public Service in the uh, State Senate, uh, dealing with public employee issues. And at that time, Ken um, <clears throat> was a legislative agent representing the professional firefighters of Massachusetts and representing them very well. And during that time, I think one of the biggest achievements that he, that he um, put through was to win passage of a cancer presumption for firefighters, which acknowledged the fact that, that our firefighters are often exposed to carcinogens and hazardous materials and such. So <clears throat> I can't help but be shaken by the sad irony that, that um, that, that he, he himself lost his struggle to uh, cancer um, last night. I think we in Arlington owe, owe Ken a great, great debt. He was very committed. He was committed to the young and the old. He was committed to the, the little guy. And he was committed to one thing that he was particularly committed to was to battling um, the scourge of, of mental illness. Um, he won for this town several years over um, in conjunction with his legislative colleagues six-figure support for the Arlington Youth Counseling Center, and he was honored for that a few years ago by the, um, the Board of Youth Services. <clears throat> I, I spent many hours with him at various events around town, and I know th this is something that I think all my colleagues can relate to. We would talk a lot about the tension of balancing public service with family life and how you do that, and the efforts that, he, that each of us make, and I think we can relate to this too, to try to protect our uh, spouses and significant others from, from the limelight. And um, he did that well. He would always light up when he talked about bringing his grandchildren ice fishing up north. He always made an effort to make their special um, events like First Communions and such. Um, Arlington, I think, is greatly diminished without um, Senator Donnelly. Um, he was a um, <clears throat> gentle soul, but uh, also a real uh, fighter. So I would like to ask if the board and the members here could please join in a moment of silence. We certainly ask that Ken rest in peace and our thoughts and prayers go out to, to uh, his wife Judy and all of his his uh, family I don't know if my colleagues would join. So thank you all <clears throat> I know that some of you are maybe new here or maybe new watching at home and uh, maybe you wonder who the who the uh, cast of characters up front here is and um, I'd just like to let, let you all know who, who all is at the front table now especially since we shuffled around a bit so my name is Joe Curo to my right, of course, is our new, new vice chair, uh, Stephen Byrne. To my left, uh, Mr. Kevin Greeley, Diane Mahan, as I said, newly reelected, and Dan Dunn, the Board of Selectmen. Assisting us in our business this evening is our, our staff, uh, our Deputy Town Manager, Sandy Pooler, our Town Council, Doug Heim, and our Board Administrator, Marie Kropelka. And I would like to explain why, ordinarily in uh, Mr. Pooler's seat, uh, we see Mr. Chapdelaine. 
And I'd like to share the happy news that the reason Mr. Chapdelaine is not here is that just after 11 o'clock this morning, his wife gave birth to an 8.2 pound um, baby son, um, Roger Philip Chapdelaine. And I know that our, our uh, good wishes um, go out to uh, the entire Chapdelaine family, Adam and Rita, and now uh, big sister Pearl. So um, we, we wish them well. And we look forward to uh, Adam's return after he has some time uh, with, his, with his family. So without uh, further ado, we, I'd like to move on to um, item number two on, on, the, um, on the Selectman's agenda. Proclamation, April is Autism Awareness Month, and I'd like to turn it over to uh, Ms. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for opening the meeting with some very solemn news. Some explanatory news and some celebratory news. Um, that's a difficult balance and <laughs> it's your first meeting and you stepped right up to the plate. Uh, I also would like to thank my colleagues in terms of uh, April is Autism Awareness Month. Um, pretty much as long as I've been on this board, I believe Mr. Grayley was the first chairman. Um, uh, when I was elected back in 99, my first act the following year, uh, was to recognize autism awareness, and that's when they were citing figures that one in 162, and now we're down to one in 80, and some say one in 60 are diagnosed with autism. And uh, one of the things before I read the proclamation is that autism, they say it's a broad spectrum, or autism spe spectrum, it really is. You, you have some high, higher functioning autism children and, and young adults, and then you have some lower functioning, more severely um, affected by autism, but one is no more, no, no less th than um, in terms of the diagnosis. But I think that from when I first got on the board, when people heard autism, it pretty much was straightforward explanation versus now where people sort of recognize the extremely broad spectrum as well as um, dealing myself personally as well as other members in the board um, with uh, f family members that if you talked when I first got on the board back in 1999, there was next to nothing in terms of education, in terms of uh, opportunities for individuals on the autism spectrum. And part of the initiative by Autism Speaks and, and other groups, um, I mentioned Autism Speaks because that's to whom the proclamation uh, requests usually comes from and to whom I'm a member and deliver to is feeling that one of the things they can feel confident about is the fact that uh, education is out there and the just beginning research um, in terms of looking at the broad range of autism spectrum and uh, what possibly could be offered and I really think similar to uh, developmentally uh, normal spectrum kids same common denominator as early intervention is key. Um, and I think we, we've really seen that, uh, certainly here on the town side, but definitely on the school side for all forms of uh, children entering the educational system. So with that, uh, I, I wanna thank my colleagues for once again doing this, for really giving their support. Some of us, you know, walking the walk, whether it's family members, whether it's coworkers um, who have done this. I wanna thank Mr. Chapdelaine through Mr. the acting town manager, Mr. Pooler, uh, for lighting up Town Hall Blue, because the first week in April, that's the campaign lighted up blue to get the awareness out. So the proclamation uh, reads as follows. Whereas autism is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social, learning, and behavioral skills of those affected by it, and whereas autism was once thought to be a relatively rare disorder affecting only one in 10,000 people, and whereas more and more health professionals become proficient in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the autism spectrum, resulting in rates as high as one in 50 children, and whereas unfortunately, while there is no cure for autism, it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive treatment early in their lives, it is often possible for those individuals to leave, lead significantly improved lives. And whereas Autism Speaks and others are spearheading an awareness effort in order to educate parents, elected officials, professionals, and the general public about autism and its effects, now therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim April as Autism Awareness Month in the town of Arlington and observe the town hall displayed in blue lights for Light It Up Blue the week of April 3rd in order to increase awareness of the autism spectrum disorders 
and is signed by my colleague, the Chairman, Mr. Carroll, Vice Chairman, Mr. Byrne, uh, Mr. Greeley, Mr. Dunn, and myself, and our Board Administrator, Mrs. Kropelka. Thank second. you so much. I hear a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you very much, Ms. Mahan. And we thank the town hall staff also for enabling the, um, the lighting of the town hall and, and recognition <clears throat> of, of this. Um, appreciate your keep, yep. keeping, keeping this in front of us each year. Uh, next, we go on to the uh, consent agenda. Um, all items will be taken on a, on a single vote unless uh, otherwise um, uh, noted or, or moved by, by my colleagues. Uh, first, we have the minutes of meetings, March 27th, 2017. We have a request for a contractor drain layer license, Premier Pavers and Hardscape Company, 8 Oak Meadow Lane, Lincoln Mass, uh, Oak Meadow Road, Lincoln Mass. Request for a contractor drain layer license, Terra Landscape and Construction Incorporated, 138 Fisher Street, Westboro, Mass. Request for a special one day all alcohol license, 42217 at Whittemore Robbins House for a private event, Amanda. Uh, Sagielski and Christopher Allen. For approval, Sidewalk Cafe permits, Common Ground 319 Broadway, Bob O'Gwin, and Capitol Theater 204 Mass Ave, Richard Freeman. And appointments of new election workers, Doreen Curley, 4 Winslow Street, Democrat Precinct 10, Florence De Felice, 109 North Union Street, Democrat Precinct 5, Whitney DeVito, 25 Central Street, Unenrolled Precinct 21, and Susan Lawler, 163 Woodside Lane, unenrolled, Precinct 1. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Move approval, subject to all conditions. Second. It's moved by Mr. Byrne and seconded by Mr. Greeley. Do we have any, any discussion? Is there anyone here wishing to speak on any of the matters on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Next, we move on to open forum. Um, there was a sign-in sheet as, as you came in. Open forum, uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Do we have anyone signed up for open forum? Is there anyone here for open forum, citizen open forum? Hearing none, we will close uh, Citizens Open Forum and we move on to the next item on the agenda. The next item on the agenda uh, under traffic rules and orders and other business is the announcement and endorsement of Treasurer's Office personnel change, uh, change by our brand new Treasurer, Mr. Carmen. And before you start speaking, Mr. Carmen, I want to congratulate you on your, your election on Saturday. Thank I you. see Mr. Hayner in the audience and I congratulate him and his school committee colleagues as well as our, our, our clerk, our uh, uh, Ms. Wynne Stanley O'Connor from the, the uh, Board of Assessors, um, as well as everyone who ran for town meeting. There were some very hotly contested races. It was really horrible weather, and um, so it's everyone who got out and voted, everyone who ran, everyone who won or, or competed, thank you very much. So we're very pleased to welcome you on the very first night, thank Mr. You. Carmen. Thank you. You have the floor. So I have a few things I came for before you tonight for. The first one is the, I think, the most important one. Which, I, which you had given the lead in on the headline, which is I've come to seek an endorsement from the Board of Selectmen on a personnel change in the Treasurer's office. Now, just to be clear, more, more to the people who are probably watching this on TV than, than all of us who understand the you know, legal and statutory logistics, is the Office of the Treasurer in Arlington is an independent authority. So there are bylaws and statutes that says the Treasurer can effectively make personnel changes as they see fit. When I had campaigned, because <laughs> I was campaigning for the Office of Treasurer, one of the things I said right away, and I said early on, that was if, if I were to win, that I am not going to be the day-to-day -day department head of this office, because in my belief, the day-to-day -day department head of the treasurer's office should be a treasury professional. And I had further said that in, in carrying out this um, objective, I would work with the town manager, I'd work with the director of human resources to identify a treasury professional that they were comfortable with and they could recommend to me to make that as the day-to-day -day appointment. So the, the nice part about being unopposed is you can start working on these things right away. So the town manager was gracious enough to agree that we would start working on this right away on the caveat that if someone came as a write-in candidate or materialized a challenge that we would, we would stop. And you know through the process, I mean, I, I think as you guys probably watched in the newspaper and whatnot, I was pretty, pretty open about doing this. It wasn't like it was a big secret. Um, I, I think first wrote it 
I mean, I opened, I, I pulled papers on January 5th, which I think was a Thursday, and I put it on my website on January 7th. So that was a long time people knew this was, was out there. So, um, so Mr. Chapterlin and I endeavored on this. After some discussion, he had, he had recommended to me that the current deputy, Treasurer Michael Morse, would be to be um, elevated to a department head level position within the you know, parameters that we can do in an independent authority. He's very confident in Michael. He's very confident in his ability to run the office of the, in day to day. I then went to Karen Malloy, Director of Personnel. Well, and I, she, I know she's the Director of HR, but actually the bylaw calls her the Director of Personnel when dealing with the Treasurer. Um, so I went to Karen and in accordance with the bylaw, I talked to her about the changes. She had gone through some different things. We had we sort of worked on a, a pay and compensation package for that. We then went to the to the union. We met with the union representation from Michael, who is an SEIU. Their initial feedback so far has been good. Um, as you would expect, they have some questions, some concerns, some things they want addressed. I, I don't see anything. I'm not speaking for Karen. Um, I, I don't see anything to be insurmountable. Um, now, I, I should also caveat that by um, that's from a 40,000 foot view. I'm not a union negotiator. So this is, you know, this is the, you know, Karen Malloy and Sandy Pooler show in order to get this one finished. So, um, but I don't know if you, do you, it's gone well so far, right? Very well, yes. It's gone very well so far. So that's what I would, I would like. So what I would like is for the Board of Selectmen to endorse the recommendation of its town manager. So I don't, I don't need you to endorse me. I don't need you to think that I have any types of you know, good thoughts anywhere. Um, but I do want you to endorse the town manager's recommendation um, uh, on this matter. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Carmen. Do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Mr. Dunn. Uh, I am really happy to see Dean here. I'm really happy to have the, uh, um, I wasn't a part of any of the conversations with Adam and Dean, but I certainly talked to both of them separately at various points during this process, and it is absolutely delightful to see everybody working together towards a common goal, and uh, I think that they are working on, on sound principles. I think they've got the right goals in mind. I think the steps make sense. Uh, I absolutely move that we endorse the, these changes as uh, that the, the, the treasurer and the um, town manager are, are proposing. Do I hear a second? Second. And, and I, I just, I, I will, you know, I agree with everything Dan said. I, I think Michael is, is a great choice um, for the office. I, I, through working with him on different committees, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I, I think he's knowledgeable and I think he's the right person to it. I, I particularly like the continui continuity um, that I know um, hard, hard times can come sometimes um, when there's change like this. And I, I think that the steps you've taken have allowed, um, have allowed the town to be better off at, at this time. So thank you. Ms. Mahan? Oh, no, no, Ms. Mahan. Um, if I could, could, through the chairman to the acting town manager, Mr. Pooler, or perhaps our current treasurer, whoever Certainly. you deem appropriately. Um, I was looking at the timeline and, and listening also to the remarks by our treasurer, Mr. Carmen. Um, where are we in terms of uh, discussions with um, SEIU? Um, from what I understand, from what I've received, that everybody is saying positive things, but they're, we're not at the end of the road with that. So my, my two-part question would be, where are we with that, and what, if any, that you can discuss are things that need to um, be finalized and agreed upon, and is our vote contingent, um, which I know Mr. Dunn will read the full thing that we've been given in terms of what the actual motion should be, um, okay, or if that. we can pass that, oh, Mr. Burr did. Um, um, am I correct to assume that the motion that Mr. Burr and uh, Mr. Dunn will make will be contingent upon agreement with SEIU? Because I'm oh. just saying from what I've heard, I'm hearing that's still so being me, discussed and not ironed out. I, I agree. So let me, with the caveat that I'm not a union negotiator. Um, and I'm union, by the way. I, yes. <laughs> I, I, I will say that we had a preliminary meeting with SEIU. We went, it went very well. We gave them our offer. Um, they came back and gave us their concerns and their feedback and, and things like that. There was nothing I saw that was very concerning. What I will say without getting into union negotiations is I think if you don't endorse this, it becomes a problem. I think it's the opposite. It's not going to be something that becomes a problem if you do endorse it. It's a problem if you don't endorse it. Because, and you know, j just step back for a second and you know, put on your union hat for a sec and think to yourself, we have a political body, okay? We have a political body, we have a political treasurer, we have an Article 19 out there. And so if I was 
a union negotiator, I would be very concerned that my person is now going to be caught in the crosshairs in line of fire between me and the five of you in town meeting. And so what I think endorsing it does is it does the opposite. It provides a clear and unified mes message from the treasurer, from the board of selectmen, that this is, this is our guy. This is, we are, we en we're endorsing the recommendation of Mr. Chapdelaine, and I think it goes a long way to easing concerns that they may have, at least, at least my reading of it. Does Mr. Pooler have anything? That's Mr. Okay. Pooler, yeah. Uh, I agree with everything uh, Dean Carmen just said. Uh, we did get some feedback from the union. Um, we then internally discussed uh, some of the things they asked for. I think most of them aren't really a problem at all. Karen Malloy has been dealing day to day with that communication back and forth with the union. Um, from where I sit, um, I would say it's just a matter of a, a few days before things are finally put to bed. Uh, nothing they, they raised was a major obstacle. I, I think we'll have a deal very soon. And I do think it is important that we have their acquiescence and support. And uh, they were very enthusiastic when we first met. Just a few questions that they had. And again, I think we can get those ironed out. Okay. Anything if, more, Ms. Mohan? No. If I could, if it's appropriate, and, and I'm balancing the line here, you know, being a union member, not anything associated with the town, that when I have wanted to get involved, we certainly can't. So my concern here is, is taking a vote before that those issues have been resolved. Is there any way, including in the motion that um, Mr. Dunwell state um, is, uh, we have before us, that we can have some sort of three or four phrasing that says um, perhaps after day-to-day uh, -day operational manager of the Treasury, Treasurer, Treasury and Collection Division of the Treasurer's Office, um, some language there uh, upon successful uh, upon uh, successful discussions with SEIU. My thing is, you know, we're approving this, but one part of the pie that needs to be resolved is, and it sounds like we're there from hearing from the treasurer and the acting town manager that SEIU has presented some issues. It seems as though those will be agreed upon. So I'd like to amend that just to include that this motion also includes sort of signing off SEIU's um, suggestions and then the town uh, manager and town treasurer's uh, agreement to that. So if Attorney Heim, is that something that can be included? And if it can, what's the briefest way to say that? I think if you want to insert at the end of the motion that I've proposed, uh, upon successful, uh, I think that the endorsement is the endorsement uh, of a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you can either, at the, at the end of the proposed motion, assert something to the effect of, as also recommended by the town manager uh, and contingent upon SEIU's approval. I, I think that that would be uh, approval of the position change. I think that would be fine. Uh, but, but one of the things I would note is that this is not uh, synonymous with um, the agreement to appoint Mr. Morse as the assistant town treasurer. He's already the assistant town treasurer. We call him the deputy town treasurer. That's his position under state law and the town bylaws. So um, this particular motion does not have to have a specific form. I just wanted to try to make it as descriptive as possible about what was going on. So I, I don't see a reason why it can't be done. Okay. So well, I would ask if possible if Mr. Dunn sure. could take that as a friendly So was amendment. I hearing the motion, Mr. Dunn? Yes, definitely. Uh, I have reading now from the, from the suggested motion, which I definitely captures what I was looking for. I move that the Board of Selectmen endorses the Treasurer's plan to make Deputy Treasurer Michael Morse our Assistant Treasurer under Title I, Article 4, Section 5 of the Town Bylaws and State Law, the Day-to-Day -day Operational Manager of the Treasury and Collections Division of the Treasurer's Office, as also recommended by the Town Manager and contingent upon the uh, uh, reaching agreement with the SEIU. Mrs. Mahan, was that okay? I think Mr. Byrne, did you say? Um, I, I will second, but I do have a question now um, because I, I was under uh, when we first took the motion and, and I still do agree with it we were endorse, endorsing this plan at this current moment and now um, the with that stipulation does our endorsement change um, depending on future negotiations I my personal answer is I would cross that bridge when we get to it 
I think Mr. Himes has some, has some input. I think the, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think, Mr. Byrne, that the endorsement is what it is. You're essentially uh, doing something that I don't even know is, is strictly necessary as we're all sort of talking about it, as Mr. Carmen has sort of presented it, but it's something that uh, the elected treasurer is seeking uh, from the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Selectmen is just saying, yes, we like this and we want this, uh, so long as, uh, you know, this can be successfully negotiated with SEIU. And I, I don't think that should impact what um, we're hoping to achieve here. Okay. So I, think, I, don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it becomes, you know, anything other than what it would have been, which is that if SEIU negotiations had not worked out, then I think we would have had a practical impasse anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. that makes and Mr. Greeley? Yes, so uh, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Dean. And... Um, I really feel you're brilliant in the way you've handled this, and I thank you for being here in front of us, because you don't need to be. But you're going to see a lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, where Mr. Morse is our appointment, but I, it doesn't. This doesn't impact it at all. You're saying the title doesn't change. Is that the idea? He's still deputy. Correct. Uh, so, town manager. So his responsibilities on day to day are would, would, are going to change when we yep. get through this process. Um, obviously his compensation will change. He's actually gonna sit in that gigantic office in the um, treasurer's office. He's gonna get the treasurer's parking spot and all of those you know, fun things that come along with it. But yes, his title will remain deputy town treasurer or at least how the bylaw calls it, assistant town treasurer. Yeah. But thank you for the respect you showed us by being here yes. and asking. My pleasure. And I would also like to echo the, the, that. I, I think you've also been excellent in, in reaching out to a lot of people during this process. And I know some of the drafts you've shown me, of some of the processes that you'd like to uh, approach do include more frequent check-ins with the, uh, the Board of Selectmen also, which uh, I think will be much, much appreciated by, by all of us um, in interests of transparency and um, moving ahead. So uh, is there any further discussion on the motion that's on the table? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Can I, it's unanimous. Can I cover a couple more things while I'm here? Certainly. All right. So also in your packet is an S&P um, credit rating document for the town of Arlington. That is a document that S&P gives us every year and explains why our rating is what it is. Arlington has a AAA rating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to say this jokingly, but I'm kind of serious about it. If you so I encourage you to read the document. Something you're going to notice is that nowhere in it does it say that we have a AAA rating because the treasurer does a good or a bad job, okay? So never thank me for any of those ratings, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> With that being said, though, it does, and I don't know if you've seen it before, it does give a good um, analysis of why we have a AAA rating. It talks about community wealth. It talks about balanced budgets. It talks about cash reserves. It talks about debt load. And, and so if you have time to read it, I mean, it's, it's a really good document to get, your, to get your head around on why our credit rating is what it is. In addition to that, and I didn't send it out because I didn't want to overwhelm you, S&P also, and I'll send it out to you in, another, in a future packet, S&P also has a document that shows exactly how they weight each of the criteria that's in there. So if you, if you want to score how Arlington gets to AAA, they actually have a sheet. And so I'll send that out to you. I think it's a really good document to understand when we talk about having you know, low borrowing costs and a high credit rating and things like that, how we get to it. And so, so I thought that was really important. Um, and if you could, I'm sure you'll just receive that report, but that's fine. Yes, sir. Just a, uh, but while you're saying you don't deserve credit, you are the one that interfaces with them, though. Absolutely. And makes the presentation. Mm -hmm. And so that's still very important. It is. And you'll do it well. Ms. Mahan? I don't know if I'm, I'm reading this correctly or misreading this incorrectly, um, but when we get the, what you've given to us for, <coughs> Arlington's general obligation, and then they sort of give rationale mm -hmm. and description. Mm -hmm. One of the things I was confused about is the way I'm reading this is it, it, it talks about the uh, debt service and the percentages applied there too, mm -hmm. and then it uh, talks about uh, 73, 74% of the debt to be uh, retired within the next 10 years. Yes. But then it also says something about, it speaks to our pension and OPEB, um, obligation yep. and it, it cites a lack of a plan to yep. sufficiently address. I, I always thought that 
that that is a deficiency versus yeah. I always thought it was something that we were doing and we're sort of we're it not. It is something we're not doing. So we have a we currently have a plan to fund our pensions by I believe 2035. It's regulated. Um, it's regulated under law. It's by statute. We don't we don't have a choice. Everybody does, and I think the absolute latest we can do it is 2040. Um, there is no legal requirement to fund OPEP, and so um, right now we're I think we put a, uh, about a million dollars to it each year from various sources, and we go from there. I think as I look today, the OPEP fund has about 11 million dollars in it, but it's it's a very serious issue. Every community is facing it, um, and unfortunately, I think every community is in the same position we are, where they're not really addressing it. Um, there was an article in the Boston Globe a couple of years ago, if you remember, that said Arlington, with its then seven or eight million dollars of OPEB funding, had the most funded OPEB account in the state. Right. And I mean, if that tells you where everyone is. And so, yeah, it's, it's a big issue, and the rating agencies are picking up on it. Um, if, you, if you ask Mr. Visquet and our audited financials, they've changed the accounting standards to really highlight that on our balance sheet as just a full liability today. So, yeah, it's, it's a big issue. Just I think that Mr. Byrne had actually highlighted that that issue when we were discussing the um, the audit recent audit report. Mm -hmm. The change or was it Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Yeah. Same seat, I'll different person. Cool. <laughs> uh, you're you missed me. Yeah, you're <laughs> so, so I would anticipate my memory in terms of organization and the, the retired commission retirement commission. You have or will have a seat on that as a voting member, or do you need Mr. to? Mr. Billifer remains on the Mr. Billifer, so you won't. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Do you have any other comments or questions for Mr. Okay. Chairman? So one, last one more thing. thing. Yep. One last thing. Um, and it, I, I should point this out because it, it is kind of important. It's a couple of things just looking forward because when I said I'd come back, there's a couple of reasons I'll be coming back. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I'll say the town manager and I, I think it's more Sandy and I, have been working on a working memorandum of understanding between the office of the town treasurer and the um, town manager's office. And, and what we're trying to endeavor to do is when we talk about an integrated finance department, a lot of people stop and say, well, we can't do it right now because we have, we have an elected treasurer and we have um, the, the town's professional management. I think there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a logic to the flaw in that logic. And the flaw is that the treasurer's office can't integrate with the town manager's office because the treasurer's office by statute is an independent authority. And so there's no actual requirement to, to, to work together. And, and personally, I can speak, you know, as the treasurer, I can say that I think that's it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, we're, we're all on one team. We're all on the same side. So Sandy and I have been working on just a memorandum of understanding that says that even though we have this statutory independent authority that is the treasurer's office, that we really want to work as more of a, an integrated department, and we want to collaborate on things, and we want to have a deputy town manager who's reporting, I've done, I keep saying that, a deputy town treasurer who's reporting to the treasurer but is also accountable to the deputy town manager and that the, the staff within the treasurer's office are following the same hiring processes, review processes, and everything else that everybody else in the town is following. Um, so we should have that. I believe we have an agreement. I'll call it an agreement in principle right now. Um, I think Adam's going to sign it. So when he comes back, we'll sign that, and then we'll have that before you at a future meeting. Um, I'll also, I have it on my computer right now. I was going to wait. There are a couple other documents I'll send to you, and we'll come back and talk about it in another meeting. Um, we have an, the Treasurer's Office has an investment policy that they've had in place since 2007, 2008, last updated in December 2016. I was, so I was reading it today, and it says there's all these steps that occur with the investment policy, and then it's shared with the independent auditors, the comptroller, and the trust fund commissioners. And there's one group that was missing. You guys. Um, and so it was funny because Michael Morse pointed that out to me right away. And he said, look, look who's not on it. Um, and so I, I have that on my computer. I was going to send it in with some other, the memorandum and some other things. I'm going to send that to you. I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to come back. I don't need you to endorse it because I haven't read it. Um, and so I don't want you to endorse it. But I think it's something you guys can read, you can look at, you can agree with it. If you don't agree with it, then let's talk about it. And let's figure out what the right way to go forward on an investment policy is. There are also some, there's this big debt schedule binder that our investment bankers from First Southwest give us. It's really kind of cool. It shows where our debt's going to be on June 30, 2017. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's 330 pages. Whether or not you've seen it, you're about to get it. 
So <laughs> that is, it'll be heading your way as well. So the next time I come back, we'll just sort of tick off those three items and, Mr. and have Greeley, look, Sparks will be flying from the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still brilliant, but yeah. do you tutor idiots on reading financial <laughs> information? <laughs> <laughs> Schedule appointment. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I would say this though, in all seriousness. Um, my, um, as some of you may know, my my dad's actually the treasurer in Belmont, and um, he he said to me when it came to investment management when we were talking this weekend, he said, um, you know, always remember they'll never, no one will ever thank you if you gain the town ten percent in a small trust fund, but they will crucify you if you lose one percent. So invest based on that advice. <laughs> so I don't know how much um, I don't know how much financial intellect you need to have versus common sense that you're it's the public's money and do right by the public. Thank you. All right. I think that's a fine Good. fine Great. closing Good. statement. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very you much, Mr. Mr. Cameron. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now we move on to. Now we have to um, take the vote. Oh, did we take the? We did not take the vote. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm still learning. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have a motion on the table by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. We could tell Dean that we voted it we down. Actually, we actually <laughs> did. We actually did. Did, did we? Take, we did a vote. Oh, good. So now we've done it twice. I'm That's to receive. The wrong to say it's to receive. We, yeah, we are super sure. <laughs> trying to punk me on the first night. <laughs> I'll pay better attention. Okay, so the ne next item on the agenda is uh, final votes and comments, uh, articles for review, Article 19, vote appointment of town treasurer, which was tabled from 313 and 327. Article 29, endorsement of CDBG, application tabled from 327. Article 30, bylaw amendment, Depar departmental revolving fund bylaw, tabled from 327. And Article 31, revolving funds, tabled from 327. Uh, Mr. Heim, would you, you have given us a memo. Would you like to uh, speak to this? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, members of the board, for your patience on this. Um, one of the things that was I hoped would inform uh, Article 19 in particular was just um, having the town election and uh, getting a chance to work out a few of the details of the memorandum of agreement Mr. Um, Carmen was nice enough to, to mention. Uh, the articles in front of you, uh, two are essentially uh, pro forma articles, your CDBG and revolving funds. Um, the first is uh, re-articulation of some of the issues regarding uh, the vo vote on the appointment of town treasurer. Um, just to be clear again, we're not talking about anything that would take place tomorrow. We're talking about putting something in front of the voters to decide whether or not they want to continue to have an elected town treasurer or have an appointed town treasurer. Um, and then with respect to the revolving funds bylaw, just a quick note, we talked about it a few weeks ago. It's essentially uh, the Municipal Modernization Act is pushing everybody to put your revolving funds in your town bylaws, uh, which is what this does. There is a small piece that for the selections report will be inserted, which is essentially taking the revolving funds and smushing them into a table that was not ready. So you'll see at the end of article, the vote on article 30, it says insert revolving fund table. There will be a table that has all the revolving funds and who administers them that gets smushed in there. But um, we need to have that be finalized. But other than that, this is, that, that one's also relatively pro forma. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Heim. Do I have a motion? Move approval. And a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dunn? So uh, thank, thank you, Doug, for your patience with me on Article 19. I'm really happy with where it got to, and I, I, Doug, was, Doug did a lot of work, and I appreciate his getting that done. Article 29, it occurred to me just now, do we want to put a sentence in here talking about uh, our concerns about the federal budget? Mm. So there are two options for that, Mr. Dunn. I'm yeah. sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes. There are please. two options for that, Mr. Dunn. Uh, one is to put it in the selectmen's uh, comment. The other is to put it in the CDBG report. We've done that a couple of different ways. Uh, there have been times when there's been a reference to the CD CDBG report within the selectmen's report, but um, more often than not, the CDBG, CDBG report has just been a separate document. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe, I'm sorry. I believe Ms. Wayman uh, is, is on top of that. Do we have any other comments on comments on the comments? <laughs> uh, just I would request that um, w you know we hold hearings and then we do final votes. <coughs> a couple of these show that I was absent maybe for the hearing, but uh, am here for the final vote on the Warren articles uh, 
And to be honest, I almost wish the report would just so for, show 4-0 on a vote, not Mr. Greeley was absent. I mean, I was, I'm not trying to, but, yeah. but there's been a time like when I missed this vote, which was 12 articles or something. And since I wasn't here for the final votes, it shows was absent. Or so. so I mean, it just sometimes you're here and sometimes you're not. And sometimes you're right. here for the hearing, sometimes you're not for the final hearing. So I have to by law or something, right? If I may, it is your report. It's our report. What is the feeling of the board? If, if we get to 5 0 right now, I'm happy to say 5 0. Yeah, that's my. Thank you. Yeah. So this vote, this vote's the real one. Um, Mm -hmm. Right. That's what we're saying. We should look into the policy handbook and try to you know, put a <laughs> paragraph in here on that. Yeah. I'm only half joking. Yeah. If that, Mr. Hine, you know. No. You're right. I agree. I'm, I mean, it, it's up to the board. Uh, but if that's the board's you know, policy, am I, uh, is the direction for me to work with the Selectman's Office to move backwards on the previous votes and comments? Perhaps from this night forward. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with this night four. I'll, you don't have to go back. No. Okay. Okay. Anything more? Hear, hearing nothing. Uh, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Was there a motion? Kevin. Uh, Kevin, did. Kevin. Kevin made it. Dan Mr. Second. Dunn seconded. Yeah. Okay. And a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It is unanimous. Now we move on to correspondence received. Uh, request parking restrictions on Henderson Street, Nikki Di Pasquale, 19 Henderson Street via Request Answer Center. And request resident sticker parking only on Cleveland Street. Cheryl Marceau, Cleveland Street resident. Uh, do I hear a motion? Move receipt. Hear a second? Second. It's uh, moved by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Do I have any discussion on this? Is anybody here on this? Yeah. Young gentleman, I don't know. Anyone here on this matter? No. There's no one here on this matter. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that um, I think on the first one, uh, it came in through the uh, Request to Answer Center, and I thought that Ms. Reedy of our staff gave an excellent uh, explanation of, of what our current uh, bylaws are regarding uh, parking restrictions near driveways and across from driveways, so that the uh, resident was, um, should be very well apprised what their rights are under our bylaws. Um, and actually, the second one is a very similar type of request. So perhaps we might consider sending a similar answer to, same to them. Response, yeah. The same response that Ms. Reedy. Didn't we actually gave the second one to Corey to look at. Oh, you did? You did? Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Okay. No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. We now move on to new business. Ms. Kropelka. Nothing other than we just had an exciting day on. Saturday election. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you and all our new town meeting members. Quite a few new ones. Thank you very much. Mr. Heim. I'd just like to echo that. Congratulations uh, to the members of the board who are up for election and to say it's a pleasure working with this board. As a town manager appointee, I feel like I can credibly say that I have the, the, the great pleasure of working with this board and I'm glad to see it continue as it's compromised as well as the other folks uh, who, uh, who uh, continued their seats or were nuclearly elected at the election. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Pooler. I'd like to echo and re-echo <laughs> sentiments expressed. Um, I don't get to work with you as directly as these others, but whenever I have, it's always been a pleasure, and I look forward to doing it in a uh, stint as acting while Adam is out uh, with his new sleepless nights. <laughs> um, the only w one thing I would add is, uh, if this is an appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, is just a bit of news about our posting our budget on, on the town website. Would okay. that be appropriate this time? So uh, if I could borrow Mr. Greeley's copy here. For a, Ignore you, all the notes I've written in yeah, there. Yeah, the extensive, thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, every year the town publishes a, uh, a financial plan, which is an extensive description of the town's budget. Uh, the numbers that will be considered uh, within the Finance Committee report going to town meeting and extensive descriptions of the department's activities, their goals and objectives for the coming year and their accomplishments for the past year. Um, we then submit this uh, to the Government Finance Officers Association and for the last four years have been awarded their Distinguished Budget Award for this document and this document will go to them again after town meeting. Um, so it is now posted on the town website for anybody in the town to see, and I would encourage people to look because it really is an attempt by the departments to tell the public 
a lot about the work that those departments do. Absolutely, absolutely. I was look, looking through it today, and uh, thank you, and thank all the staff. It's a huge amount of work that goes into this document. What was that again? Oh, I'm sorry, my knee, my it said a elbow hit Siri or whatever. Sorry, what was that again? It said. <laughs> Would you like to repeat your uh, statement, no. Mr. Poole? I, I can't say it often no. enough. This is a great document, and thank anything. you very much for thank, your support. Thank you, and we hope to keep it a pleasure for you. So, oh. Mr. Greeley, tell Diane to turn off her phone. <laughs> it is. I don't know what I did. I but no, just, uh, you know, it's, it's so sad about Senator Ken Donnelly, but there's so much to celebrate um, as, as well. You know, Marie Kripelka, I don't know how many surgeries this woman has been through. Uh, it's such a thrill to see her here tonight. She's out in the snow and the rain on Saturday against doctor's orders, running the election across the whole town of Arlington and stuff. But... Uh, God love you, and you. You, you are an inspiration to all of us. So. And, and, and the joy of having uh, Diane and Dan back on the board and you as chairman, uh, Mr. Curo. And I love Steve. Did I leave you out again? You did, did, I, I, did but I'm <laughs> sensing a theme here, Mr. Greeley. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, sir. Ms. Mahan? Um, just briefly to piggyback on what Mr. Greeley said. Um, I'm happy with my colleague, Mr. Dundan, to uh, come back to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, definitely appreciate everybody who came out, and, you know, in spite of the weather and others, and, you know, I've spoken to people um, since the election, and one of the things I want to say that this board, I think, in terms of what we've accomplished over the past year, if not years, that we thank all the voters who came out, whether they voted for myself and or my colleague, Mr. Dunn or not, uh, one of the things I know all of us remain committed to, I think, sort of the tantamount um, tenant that we hold ourselves to is that, number one, we're respectful and, and civil uh, to people who come before us who have questions that we come across respectfully and civilly, as well as, as we move forward, we certainly recognize that there's, you know, uh, differing of opinions, but I think we've been really successful in the sense that um, whether we all agree or not, um, I think we certainly have gotten to the point that uh, nobody really feels that they came po forth and whether they were successful or not, that they weren't treated with the appropriate amount of um, respect and uh, realization of everything that's going on in Arlington. And I think in terms of whatever we have to do in the future, especially I've heard from a lot of people on the campaign trail, concerns about programs that we may lose, most, mostly around human services, social services, as well as education. I think this board, along, especially with my colleagues uh, sitting here, have certainly demonstrated that, you know, we're up to the task. We're aware of um, what could be in jeopardy, but we're certainly aware of uh, the fact and willing to that we're going to roll up our sleeves and address that. Um, it's not something that we're just going to let happen and, and fall by the wayside. So uh, I, I, again, thank you to the voters, everyone who came out and those who returned, myself, Mr. Dunn, and all the other elected officials and town meeting members. Um, to office, and I look forward to the coming year. And congratulations to Mr. Kiro as chair and Mr. Byrne as vice chair. And God bless both of you at town meeting. It's uh, we certainly have had some Warren article hearings that you two will uh, aptly def uh, speak on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I want to thank the voters for bringing me back. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really excited about the challenges we've got, and I'm really excited to, to work on them over the next three years. And I definitely got, as it got closer, I got more and more, I said, you know, what does it mean that no one ran against you? And I said, well, in some ways, I tried to provoke, pe provoke people to run against me because I actually wanted the race, but in other ways, um, we don't, lately we haven't had that much to fight about, and I think that that's a good thing. Uh, that may change over the next few, few years. We've got a couple big ones coming up, so, but, um, I look forward to, I really do look forward to the challenge and I'm very excited about it. So. And I love Mr. Kiro that, you know, if you can get you and Steve under here in 90 seconds, then that'll be your, the fastest opening chairmanship ever. Uh, I don't know if we're going to quite make that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that, that's laying down the gauntlet. <laughs> Mr. Byrne. <laughs> um, no, thank you very much. And um, uh, I'm honored to be appointed vice chairman tonight. And, I look forward to working with uh, Chairman Kiro. I think it will be a successful year for the board. 
Um, I'm very happy to see my colleagues returned um, to the board. I've enjoyed working with both of you, and I know that I will continue to enjoy working with both of you, both on things that we may agree with and, and maybe sometimes when we disagree. Um, Mr. Greeley, I will always disagree with you regardless of uh, your stance on the matter, so I look forward to that continuing as well. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding, of course. But no, um, thank you very much, and Marie, I am very happy to have you back. Thank you very much. I'm also, I, I did neglect to welcome you back publicly also, and we're, we're very happy. And um, you seem to have twice the energy you did before you, before you left, so not to set the bar too high there either, but um, just a couple things. Firstly, I just, um, in transition talks with uh, Ms. Mahan, uh, we did discuss, I, I will be working in the coming weeks with Ms. Uh, Malloy on the manager's um, review it, it, I trust that everybody has gotten their reviews into the to the office. I have, no. I have not. I will do that. Get them into the office. And I haven't we'll... either. I, I asked Stephen to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we made sure that he was going out on paternity leave, so you got a little bit of a grace period, but, but you know, we're going to want to get on that. Yep. Um, uh, secondly, um, I think really to Ms. Mahan's point, she was highlighting some of the um, human services and some of the things that we try to do and some of the fears. Um, you know, every year, um, I know that uh, Middlesex uh, Senior Services does invite public officials to go take a ride around uh, on the Meals, Meals on Wheels, and, and I, um, I did that on Friday. I, I actually happened to go with a, a volunteer Meals on Wheels driver who was a retired Arlington firefighter, um, and uh, couldn't be better because he has a good eye for Meals on Wheels is really about more than just the meals. It's about the visits, and we had people telling us how lonely they are sometimes. And, um, and it's about just looking to check in on them and see if, if there are any other types of problems. Um, and um, I know that there is fear out there. There's been a lot in the news about potential cuts in Meals on Wheels. I've talked to some of our legislators. I, I think that in Massachusetts we're going to be okay because we do it differently from some states. A lot of states, um, I think they rely on the CDBG funding for Meals on Wheels. We got problems with the CDBG. We know that, but but um, that's that's uh, one thing I wanted to to uh, note. I also wanted to note, um, also as far as uh, seniors go, there is a new um, transportation outreach group that the Council on Aging has helped to put together, and they did a transportation fair um, this past Thursday. Um, it's a group of volunteers working with Bill Murphy and working with the council, working with the. Uh, Arlington Seniors Associations. They did a transportation fair at the Senior Center. They did two sessions last Thursday. I went into the second session, and by the time I got there, um, almost 70 seniors were, had been signed up for Charlie cards. Mr. Muncie was there with a blue curtain and a camera, and they had the forms to try to assist the seniors in signing up. And this, as we've heard so many times, transportation is so important. There's currently a proposal that's been floating out with the MBTA, which sounds completely insane, where they're proposing that the ride premium services be discontinued and that councils on aging pick up these services um, between 5 a.m. and midnight. And as we know, we don't operate our transportation services between 5 a.m. and midnight. We, we struggle to put it together between CDBG funding and some private fundraising and such to keep those transportation um, Dollars flowing. So that's something I think we're going to want to look at and, and follow very closely uh, with the um, MBTA. I don't know if Mr. Byrne, you're you're up there. I know you specialize in transportation. I don't know um, if yeah, you're I, aware of this. You know, I I'm very aware of it, and it's something that you know for, through my day job we've been paying attention to. Actually, it, uh, you you saying that made me think fondly of a letter that actually Senator Donnelly sent just last week, um, calling out the cuts to the ride and. Um, you know, it just speaks to, to the work that he's done, and I think it'll have a lasting impression. Thank you very much. And that is all the new business that I that I have here tonight. Move to adjourn. There a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It is unanimous. Next scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is uh, April 10th, 2017. Thank you, Arlington. Go Gonzaga.